Heather, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. It's great seeing you. Good to see you, Paul. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So what's what do you got behind you there? You, what are those? Tell us about the paintings you have behind you. I have two of my paintings here. One of them is um, it's called Plumeria in Paradise. And since I do paint a lot of flowers, I love flowers very much. Uh, Plumerias are one of my favorites. They remind me of Hawaii and the smell, as you know, is heavenly. So um, that one is uh, actually part of a mural that I photographed up close. And then this one, I don't know if that's in here. So yeah. is, uh, this is one of my favorites. It's called New Beginnings. And that's the St. Augustine Sunrise. I guess it it's sunset, whoever's looking at it, right? That's up to their interpretation. <laughs> but that, that's my version of the sunrise. And um, again, I love flowers. So that's, that's, I made a little, you know, sunflower sunrise. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. I love sunrises too. One of the benefits of living on a boat is that I get to see every sunrise and every sunset. I try to catch every one of them. Wow. Um, that's yeah. amazing. I, I see some of them on, on your um, Instagram. I do uh, like them. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I like yes. them too. Thank um, you for sharing. All right. So tell us, what when you were a little girl, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, when I was a little girl. Well, when I was a little girl, like in elementary school, I, I wanted to be a singer. I used to tell people... Um, there's something about, you know, watching people sing, you know, like Whitney Houston. And like, I just felt like it would feel so good to be able to like sing like that from within and express yourself. I, mm -hmm. And I say I was going to be a singer, although that's, I'm not close to <laughs> singing. <laughs> did you, did you ever my... sing? Did you ever try? No, no, not unless I'm in the shower singing to myself or in the car. No, no. <laughs> yeah, singing's scary. Uh, it's, it's, it's yeah, terrifying. It's... I mean, some people are gifted. That's not my gift. I do have a different other artistic gift. So, you know, I'm happy about that. I won't quit my day painting job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you been in any other type of artist besides painting? Oh, yes. Yes. I've um, I've done a lot of different things. You know, I started drawing and painting when I was young, always. Uh, and then um, I did years of ceramics. I love working with clay. Uh, a lot of ceramics. I did floral work. I've done stained glass and mosaic. Um, you know, you name it. If it's artsy, craftsy, I'm I'm into it. <laughs> Always that that little girl that couldn't stop doing arts and crafts. That's still me. I'm still doing the art products. Very good. Was there a specific point in your life when you decided you wanted to take it professionally? You know, and did it ever like change from hobby to to profession? Was it a or was it a gradual change? Um, I guess it all—it always kind of flowed for me. You know, the art just flowed for me naturally. It was always really therapeutic for me. And I think as an adult, at a certain point, um, when I realized I was good at other things, I was just like, well, if I put the same energy into my art, why not? I'm sure, you know, anything is possible, right? So mm -hmm. uh, I think when I started with the body painting, um, you know, I decided like, hey, people make money doing crazier things that people, you know, you know, I mean, there's so many things out there people do to make money. I was like, well, if I want to do body painting, why can't I make a living doing that if I decide I want to, you know, so I made a decision. I, I was going to start doing body paint full time and uh, um, marketed myself. And I put the quote right above my day. Anything is possible, mm -hmm. you know, because it's our own voice that can sabotage us, you know, and if we believe in ourselves and we believe anything is possible, then it is, as you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, and the uh, the last guy I interviewed on my sailing podcast, that was one of the points he made in a in a book he had written that that um he said something like genius comes from believing in yourself to the point where you'll just doggedly attack a goal until you get it. Um and and you have to believe you have to believe in yourself in order to do that. So, you're right. Self-talk, yeah. positive self-talk. Absolutely. Um you know, and, and it does help to have those cheerleaders in your life too. I mean, I've been fortunate to grow up, you know, I've been drawing and painting since I was young and I'm still like, I went to kindergarten with a lot of the same kids I graduated with who I'm still in touch with now. And, you know, they see me grow up and it's like, well, you're still doing your art. I mean, they still buy my art, you know, they still support me. Like I, I have so many people that believe in me. So even if I'm down 
on myself for a minute or whatever, I feel like, well, I can't let them down. <laughs> you know? Very good. Yeah. Did you, how did you learn? Did, are you self-taught or did you take classes, read books? How, how uh, did, um, how do you, how did you learn to paint? Well, I am a big reader, big time, but, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I've been drawing to paint since I was young. Like, like I said, when I was really young, um, if I would get upset or, you know, you get in trouble, or you get mad at your parents, like I would go in my bedroom and just draw to go cool off. And I would just draw, I loved drawing animals. And I had these little books that I would like, you know, uh, children's books. I would look at the animals in there and I would draw for like hours. And then I would come out with a drawing and it was kind of like Mount Green, you know, like I cooled off up and I'm, I'm, I'm coming out, you know, to, to make amends. <laughs> and um, I would get positive recognition for it too. And it would make them happy. And I saw that not only was my art therapy for me and made me happy, but, you know, it, it made them happy. And then in school, you know, ever since first grade or even kindergarten, I remember them saying, well, Heather's the artist. And that always came naturally to me. It was pretty effortless. So I was pretty lucky that it, I, you know, I struggled in school in a lot of ways. I was always a great reader and I was great at art, but math still can't do a math problem to save my life, you know? So um, it felt good to have something that flowed for me, that came naturally for me. And then, and then I would get positive recognition for it. Um, so mm -hmm. it was rewarding as well and gratifying. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, and then, you know, I think learning techniques, like as I got a little older, like in junior high, middle school, when my art teachers, they taught, actually taught me how to shade. And that's when I started playing with clay too. And they, I, I would really, once you, once I learned techniques, I could really take off with it. Like I love learning techniques. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, once I, and then in high school, like it was like wide open. I mean, you know, I won the awards at our high school, you know, my art teachers, I had ceramics. I had so many art classes. I had total freedom, carte blanche to like the art room. And I just, um, in my free time, you know, I went to the beach and, and hang out with my friends, but um, I've always spent, enjoyed my alone time. So I was always working on my art projects and I was always reading too. I'm curious what you think about um, where the ability to create art comes from. Do you think that in, in you, in, in your case, is it more, uh, talent that you were born with, or is it more learning and working at it? That's a question, and I think could vary for everybody. Um, for me, I really think I was born with a natural gift, too. Um, I'm highly creative. I mean, I can't even sleep at night because I have so many creative ideas, you know, sometimes. Uh, and... <clears throat> I also have a drive to execute them. Like I, I'm not just a talker, I'm a doer. Like I'll be doing it before I'm even talking about it, you know? Um, I I really think that skill can be learned. And of course, you know, um, the more you do something, the better you're going to be at it. I do believe in that, you know, like they say, what well, practice makes perfection or whatever. Not that I'm striving for perfection ever, but, you know, I do think the more you do something and the more confidence you have in yourself with it, the better you're going to be, you know, but I, I, I will say like, I, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, I'm, I get into a painting and when I step back and look at it, I'm just like, I don't even know how that happened. I don't know how I to do that. I don't know. I, I feel like I've always just had a connection with color and I speak to myself. I, I communicate with color a lot and express myself with color. And I, I actually think that color was my first language and I'm probably most, most fluent in color. Um, mm blending colors and <clears throat> like i never studied that i don't even understand the color wheel you give me really? the color wheel yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> it, I, it, it confuses me it it slows me down like if i try to break it down but if i just paint and just i just for some reason know how to i don't know how i know how so when i step back and look at a painting I'm often just sometimes blown away because I feel like there's a power much larger than myself coming through me, coming through my hand. I don't, I, as a matter of fact, for years when I was younger, I had trouble taking, um, accepting recognition. Like when I would win awards or different things, my mom would say, they want to look like happy or why don't you um, <laughs> celebrate more? And I was like, I don't know. I don't feel like, I, why do I deserve a award for doing something that just, comes out of me naturally like I don't 
I didn't really try that hard. I don't know how it happened, you know? Wow. That's so interesting. Yeah, because uh I don't know, sometimes sometimes I feel exactly like what you just said, where where it's where it's coming out of me, mainly in, in music that used to happen. Um, but it's also so much work. All the different art that I've tried to do, <laughs> that I'm still trying to do, is uh a whole lot of work. A whole lot of work. Yeah. It's it's a little well, bit of both, I think, for me anyway. So I'm always curious what other artists say. You know, I, I asked my brother the same question thinking he was going to say oh you know acting is just it's all work 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 and he said he said no i he said i just <laughs> that's not at all what he said <laughs> <laughs> i mean when he first got into it he, he, he um his, his entrance into it was because he had inborn talent not because he worked now he works very hard of course right. but but uh right i was gonna say that and you know people often say um Oh, you're so lucky you get to do what you love for a living. You know, when you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Now, that's not true. I 100% disagree because <laughs> then what you love does become work. Yes, that's, that's, that's exactly that's right. A double -edged sword. That's a double-edged sword because although I do love what I do and I'm so blessed and I'm at a point where I do get to paint what I like, um, I've often, you know, through body painting and jobs, um, it's not that I dislike what I'm painting, but it wouldn't be what I choose to paint if I had my, if I could choose what I was painting next. But that's making a living. And yes, I'm still blessed to be able to paint for a living. And, I, you mm -hmm. know, I've never, even though I'm painting something that wouldn't be my choice, it's still a blessing, but it does become work and it becomes more challenging too. a lot more challenging when you're not inspired to paint what you're painting. You have to mm -hmm. pull you then really dig deep and uh, it can slow me down. And, um, but it always works out and I'm grateful for it. You know, and it's, everything's a stepping stone. And yeah. that, that's a little learning how, how to create uh, when you're not so inspired. That's that was one of my questions. How how do you deal with working when you're not inspired to work, but you have to work? It's tough sometimes. It is, uh, um, because also <clears throat> when I'm creating, it does take a lot out of me. I've noticed, like I have to take breaks, like major breaks, even for like a day or two. Really, mm. um, when I really delve in, I don't realize it, but I'm so mm. into it, and I'm so consumed, and I'm so, and then all of a sudden, it's just like. You know, it takes me a minute to switch gears, I think. Like, it's like, okay, the next painting or the next project, it's like, okay, I need a minute to, like, decompress, a minute to regenerate myself, you know, go out in nature, you know, I'm inspired. So I've often said this as an artist. Um, I feel like um, being an artist is 90% inspiration and 10% perspiration. And, yeah, perspiration. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like my number one job as an artist is – to start and that's a daily job and so instead of thinking oh i'm going to play or i'm wasting time no it's crucial to my productivity and my creativity that i do go watch the sunrise or i do go look at those flowers and take some pictures of them or or spend time with my soulful time with my beautiful dogs or whatever it is um that inspires me i need to keep doing that because i i don't personally believe in creative block I think creative block is just you haven't been you haven't been feeding that the artist in yourself. You haven't been taking care of and nurturing the inspirational side of yourself. Hmm. Very good. And that, yeah, I think you that's actually super you actually broke up right when at the the crucial point of that statement. You said the number one job of <laughs> me being an artist is um, the to be number inspired? one job. Yes, the number one job for me to be an artist or be, of being an artist i believe is to stay i believe that's the most important thing um and stay inspired that leads yes to stay inspired yes there it is and you it's actually, a full-time job yep <laughs> you actually you actually broke up right on the same words the second time too it's almost impossible the number one job <laughs> of, of you being an artist is to stay inspired i think is what you're yes, saying the number, yes the number job for me of uh, the number one job I found of being an artist is to stay inspired. Um I think it's 90% inspiration and 10% perspiration. Not that I don't physically work hard because I do, but I feel like the number one job that I can't stop that every mm -hmm. single day I have to make sure is to stay inspired. Mm -hmm. In some cool. way. Even a yeah. little way. Yeah. And, and the ways you do that are they you mentioned going outside and looking at the sunrise and nature. Any other any other tricks to get inspired? I'm reading, of course. I actually have this book. I, I I do a daily read every morning. I just I drink my tea and I put on my incense and a candle, you know. And I 
I have this book, um, The Artist's Way, every day. I, I know I um, I listened to another one of your podcasts, and she mentioned The Artist's Way. But this is just an everyday one day read. And it, who, who, and wrote, have, who wrote that? Julia Cameron, The Artist's Way. It's a Julia bigger Cameron. book, but this is just one daily read. Yeah. Um, and and I really like. I I have a few books that are my daily reads, and sometimes I'll read a few of them or pick an inspirational card, and you know, just treat myself mm-hmm. right. Go out you do that first thing in the morning, right? Yes, yes. B- before you look at your phone or after? Um, honestly, after <laughs> I look at my phone. <laughs> That's so hard, isn't it? <laughs> I, well, I, I did the I, same thing. I, I gotta I make try. sure my I gotta make sure oceans up getting ready for school, and I gotta feed the dogs. Yeah, you got the you got more responsibilities. Yeah. Now, because I do the same yeah. thing, I get up and. I try to, I mean, ideally I would, I would read poetry first thing in the morning, like while I'm, while I'm boiling water for coffee I, and, and you know, I'm trying to leave my phone where it is and read poetry first. I, I think, I, I think that, I don't think you want, you know, Instagram posts in your brain first thing, you know, um, that's what oh, I'm trying to healthy. do anyway. Yeah. It's not healthiest to have your own thoughts and, and your own inspiration, you know, feed, feed yourself what you think you need first before you're, you know, everyone with the outside social media is cramming stuff down your throat. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Your mind. <laughs> yep. All right. What do you think the purpose of art is? If it has a purpose. The purpose of art. The good one. I think um, the purpose of art is sharing your gift. I think if you have a gift, um, whatever your art is, you know, I think whether you're an amazing chef or a musician or writer, um, I think it's our, our responsibility to share our gifts. Um, and, um, a lot of it is to share a message. Like a lot of my art, like I paint the sunrise cause the sunrise, um, to me is so healing for me. I found it to be the most amazing medicine I've ever experienced. You know, when I was going through a really hard time or dark time, and I just went to watch the sunrise every morning because it was the only thing I could count on. I felt like no matter what I could count on, I know the sun's going to rise tomorrow and it's going to be there for me. And I could soak it up and I could be a part of it and feel a part of it. And that, and it carried me. And it was, I I tell people like, listen, you're you're depressed. You don't want to get out of bed. Force yourself, go watch the sunrise. I promise you can watch the sunrise for a week straight. It'll change your life. Even a Hmm. week. If you can go a month, I mean, you know, just feeling that energy and the message of the sun, you know, it's new beginning, every day's a new day. And no matter what, the sun's going to rise. It's never going to let you down. The sun doesn't decide, ah, uh, is anyone going to be there to watch me today? Is anyone going to be there? You know, should I show up? You know, the sun's going <laughs> to rise. You know? and, and I think so do I. I don't have a right either. You know, I'm part of this universe and and, and, and I, I got to get up and rise too. I got to rise with the sun. and. I think we learned so many, um, you know, we could learn so many lessons from nature. And I think, um, you know, I feel like if you can't get up and watch the sunrise, I wanted to start to paint the sunrise for everybody. So, you know, if you can't get up and make it, you have this painting in your house, you're never going to miss it. You're never going to miss the sunrise. It could always be there for you, you know? So I just want to share that light and what I've learned. And I think on so many levels, you know, in music, there's so many messages, uh, you know, um, and, and even political art, there's messages and, you know, and expression, you know, I know um, art, of course, is a form of expression and, and therapeutic for the soul and healing for the soul and healing for others. You know, so many people look at my paintings and like, wow, so soothing. I love looking at them. And, you know, I got like goosebumps even looking at it or it's so healing. So, you know, it has so many um, positive things. Very good. What do you think makes art good? Because so so much <laughs> art, so much art that I look at, um, like in galleries, in big in galleries in big cities, some some of it I just don't get. It, it means nothing to me. I would never have it on my wall. I would never pay anything for it. And then there's a lot of art that I love and I think is beautiful, and I would love to have it on my wall. But what but what do you think makes art good? And I guess, again, that's like in the eyes of the beholder, right? That's like um, to interpretation. I, 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 I agree with you, you know, of course, can't like all the art out there. Um, some of it understand um, what makes art good, 
good. I think there's two different things there that I think make art good. I think um, art that does convey a clear message, um, art that or conveys a powerful message is good to me. Like I'm impacted by art that's like, wow, I'm, I'm really like feeling that. I get their message, you know? Um, and art that shows a lot of technique to me, that shows like, you know, they really mastered their technique, you know? Um, I can really appreciate like wow that wows me you know with their technique i think technique is is uh to me speaks a lot being as an artist and i know um you know how learning some techniques can be a little more challenging and you know knowing your medium like wow they really know their medium wow they really mastered that you know i think that's what i've always loved about artists and creative people in general like when you see someone that's really good at something i admire that because i know they've spent a lot of time alone with that that instrument or that medium, you know, that didn't, I mean, they, they, you know, they're basically like married to that. It's a part of them. It's part of who they are, you know, and it radiates out of them. I just love that. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, um, we've, we've talked about, you know, reading your, your book in the morning or, or reading poetry. I said, and you've talked about sunsets, uh, sunrises, but what sunsets other too. sunsets too? Yeah. They're just as good. What? Um, <laughs> They're they're just as reliable too. Um, how, yeah, else do, have... <laughs> how else do you foster and maintain creativity? They're just as reliable. <laughs> um, how do I foster and maintain creativity? Well, I think like you know, like I've been working on a project, Heather's Heart Art. You know, and Valentine's was coming up, and I've always loved Valentine's, and I've always loved handmade gifts. You know, so I'm always thinking of ideas. You know, like well, I'm going to make. I was just laying there probably in the middle of the night while I'm not sleeping, you know, and <laughs> thinking, wow, Heather's heart art. That sounds really fun. I love Valentine's. It's near my birthday. And I'm going to make, I'm going to make these. And, you know, I come up with all these ideas and, and, you know, first I was going to paint them on wood and I cut up all these wood pieces, but then I found these little heart magnet pieces and, you know, it, it evolves. You know, if I get these ideas and they evolve and like I said, I'm a doer, like I just get these ideas and um, I have to, I have to bring them to fruition. It's just something in me, you know. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you end up buying a? Did you end up buying a bandsaw? I did buy a bandsaw. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a bandsaw. This is funny. Okay, so I was cutting out pieces of wood from. I called Paul because I was like, I'm doing Heather's hard art. You know, I know Paul's a, a, a craftsman with wood. You know, he knows his tools. So I needed a bandsaw. I thought I needed a bandsaw. I wasn't sure, so I went and bought one. But then my my project kind of took a different direction I'm, I'm still going to get into the bandsaw but I was kind of like on a timeline you know like Valentine's was like coming up and I, was like, I really got to get on this Heather's hard art you know cutting arts and sanding them was going to be a lot you know uh, yeah more tedious so yeah. I returned it but <laughs> <laughs> all right you gave it a shot though huh yeah <laughs> oh, very good that's that's uh it's quite a tool the bandsaw <laughs> all right uh do you have any rituals that you go through before you paint? I do have some rituals often. Yeah. I, um, and, and when I complete a painting, I actually have rituals too. So, um, I will always light an incense and sometimes the Palo Santos, I like candles and I'll just kind of center myself, you know, um, maybe a little mini meditation. I feel like painting, um, being completely consumed in the act of painting is actually my meditation, but, you know, kind of centering myself and I close my eyes and I see, um, like, I know what I want to paint and I have a vision of kind of what I want to execute. And I see colors swirling. Colors. I can't even explain it. Kind of like how, you know, a diag like an atom or the universe, like things swirling in my head, you know, uh, and it just kind of like expands and gives me freedom to create. And it connects me with what what's going to flow through me with the source and the energy that's going to make create this painting um and sometimes i will sit and read uh something or i'll pull a card too and i have these color oracle decks which are really cool too uh that speaks about the healing energies of color and um, and so uh yeah i do have little rituals that i do like that and i'll put on some music usually um uh a lot of times it's piano or something deep been instrumental, of course, it varies. Uh, it depends, mm -hmm. uh, but something soulful and deep. Is there anything that you avoid that in inhibits creativity? 
Well, I'm learning to avoid things in life. <laughs> <laughs> what have What have you learned to avoid? Uh, I, 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 you know, other people's drama or just people in drama, toxic relationships, um, things that it's it's creative suicide for me. I can't. I'd rather be alone. Like I, you know, uh, the artist to me is my best friend. So, uh, like if I if I I've just learned that I have to take care of the artist in me because the artist in me always has my back. The artist in me heals everything in life for me. Uh, so I can't, uh, I just can't, I can't get in a situation that's going to be like creative suicide. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree more. Um, obviously I'm out here on a sailboat by myself <laughs> writing books. <laughs> There's no drama. <laughs> There's no drama here on my sailboat ever. <laughs> the damn fish. <laughs> uh, sometimes, well, yeah, there's there's fish drama sometimes. Totally. <laughs> drama, drama, drama for them. <laughs> right. Oh, here comes Paul. <laughs> oh. Real quick rituals. At the end of my paintings, I I will usually every finished piece I take to the sunrise. So each piece is like you know sun kissed and blessed by the sun rays. And I will set it in the sand so it's actually touched by the earth and the sand. And I will put some of the ocean on it. So it's actually has some of the, um, it's been baptized by the elements mm -hmm. in the air. Wow. Baptized. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's next level. It's now one. It's not just a sunrise. It's actually been infused with the sunrise too and all the elements. Yeah. Sweet. Very cool. All right. Tell me something that you love about painting. What's not to love? <laughs> All I love about painting, I love the colors. I love um, the blending and layering of colors. I find, um, you know, if you're watching me paint or someone's watching, they'll be like, oh, you know, I was in a relationship once and he was like, I would look at your painting and be like, wow, she's really like done it now. Like she's got to be able to work herself out of that. Like that looks like a mess. And he's like, and then I'll come back a few days later and Oh my gosh, like each layer by layer, he's like, no, you, I've learned that you know what you're doing. I've learned that that that's not it, which is why artists don't like people to see their unfinished pieces, right? You can't judge an unfinished painting. <laughs> it's got right. layers and layers, you know? Um, so I would definitely say like color blending. I love color blending, uh, layering, mixing colors, everything with color, like the, the texture of paints. I mean, ever since I was little, like, I don't know why, but I remember like I had this little bear and the bear had this mini stroller and I remember being so tiny and I just all I could think about every time I looked at that stroller is I want to paint that stroller that stroller I would look at things I just wanted to paint them. I can't explain why but <laughs> and I do hence I do like painting and canvases were my last thing I've always loved painting on texture which is probably why I love body painting I love painting on the skin I love painting on the curves um and texture you know I like painting on things for some reason too but canvases mm -hmm. Um, at first they didn't inspire me. It was just a blank square. I didn't even know where to begin. I would look at it. And honestly, I was not inspired to paint a canvas. I could look at a body and be so inspired or hand me a piece of wood and I'd be inspired, but something about just a blank square canvas, uh, didn't inspire me. But now I, I don't think like that. I've moved past that. <laughs> good. Good. Well, I'm, I'm curious about body painting. Um, you know, I look at, I mean, I mean, and just for the listeners, we're talking about like, the human figure painted up sometimes to make them look like a, a butterfly or a, or a wolf or something. Or, and sometimes it's multiple people all wrapped up together and it looks like a frog. And of course there's all sorts of variations on that. But um, the first thing I notice is that they're all naked, you know, I mean, almost. And it, it seems, it just seems like it would involve such a high degree of intimacy to paint on a naked person. Um, and then they get, and then they're all like tangled up together. Uh, and and maybe that's just my immaturity, but it, but is is it intimate like that, or or is it just just art and work to you? No, really. You could joke about it, or you know, break the ice. You know, someone might be nervous at the beginning, but um, yeah. I mean, actually, body art, if you think about it, is one of the oldest forms of art in the world. You know, tribes um, back in the day. Um, you know, aside from cave painting and stuff, like next was body art. You know, um, mm. expressive you know, a scarification, you know, tattooing, you know, painting with the clays and the different colors. So um, body art's very tribal. Um, but as far as the interlevel, level, like, um, 
before the body painter, I got painted a few times and I thought the same thing. I was very nervous and it was a, a man. Uh, he taught, he was the first one that introduced me to CJ. He's amazing. He's in uh, Miami. He introduced body art to me and he painted me. And I realized like at first, it, I mean, I was like nervous, but then it was like, well, he doesn't even, he's just like so into his painting. Like he's not really focusing on the fact that there's a naked girl in front of him. I mean, he can't be the whole time because he, he was so focused on what he's doing, you know? Um, so it's the same, you know, it's, it's more like the artist's job to uh, break the ice and, and make the model comfortable. And most of the time they do have pasties on or new seamless panties, or they have like these little prosthetic things that um, glue on, you know, so you're covered for the most part. I mean, I've only painted completely all nude a few times. That was at the Playboy Mansion. They were all nude. Um, uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, you're just so focused on what you're doing. And there's so many bodies in front of you. I, I think most you know, uh, painters would agree that it's, it's not a huge intimate thing. Um, uh, it obviously is intimate because there's nudity, but on everyone's professional about it. And it's all about the art. It really is. You know, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I've had to get shower and scrub some of those girls off and, you know, get in all kinds of crevices and cracks. You know, I'm sure plenty of men would love to have my job sometimes, but I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> But it's still, you know, it's all, it's all, you know, their, their models are being paid or, you know, whatever. It's always on a, on a professional, uh, beautiful, creative level. And when it, when it, the, the piece is complete, it shows, you know, everyone's mm -hmm. like, wow, you know? Yeah. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's stunning. Yeah. It's and next it's level. So, you, you see someone come in and they're nervous. They might be really nervous. And when I filmed like naked Vegas, some of the models would be nervous when they came in and then. By the time you're they're fully painted, I mean they're actually literally more covered than if than clothes, even because then their hands and feet and face and I mean it's very uh, it's liberating and it's very transformational. And like uh, I think everyone should be body painted at some point in their life. It's a beautiful experience. <laughs> hey, um, as an aside, I got to say while you were talking about uh, being in the guy that introduced you to body painting who painted you, a, th yeah. a thumb a thumb came up on your screen. A down thumb came up uh, on your on your screen, yeah, like like a Facebook thumbs down, like it popped up and it popped up and floated right next to you. That's weird. On your screen, yeah. What I mean, like, would your phone do that for some reason? I don't know why. That's so weird. Yeah, I don't it know. was. I, I, okay, we'll just hope it doesn't. I said his name CJ from Miami. I said it again. See if my phone does it. I don't know. No, CJ and I are great friends. You know, <laughs> I don't know. He introduced me to body art, and um. Uh, at first I, I would model for him and I just, and I was learning. I, I called mm -hmm. and asked him if I could be his assistant. He was this white boy from the Bronx. He was so cool. He's like, yo, I had a gig tonight, show up, you know? And um, so, so I did, and then he hired me to paint me a few times. But And then I started going to body art events, um, uh, like, uh, what you know, like uh, big body art events where everyone's painting and you learn from other people and you take some classes and stuff. So the body art industry is a beautiful industry. I've met so many amazing people and body art has taken me all over the world and met some of the coolest artists and amazing people. It's a really tight uh, group of people. Everyone's very generous with their tips and tricks. And um, yeah, I've made a lot of amazing friends in the body art industry. I love them. Wow. All right, cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very impressive to see, uh, to see that done um and it looks like a lot of work but it looks like it might be fun yeah. too so <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of work i mean art is work too yeah oh yeah it certainly is it certainly is and a lot of lies oh my gosh i need like a whole I, I mean it's like and then when you do different forms of art you know i got my body art stuff and acrylic stuff and i have mural stuff and you know there's there's so many different things and i oh i do my shark's tooth jewelry I was a shark's tooth hunter for years. And so then I make my shark's tooth jewelry. I got all my jewelry stuff. It's like, you know, I, you, where do you put all this stuff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I, when I got, when I sold my house and got rid of all my stuff, it was like, I've got to get rid of 30 paintings, you know? Um, yeah. It was tough. I mean, I gave them all away. Um, but even, even giving them away, even giving away my paintings was difficult sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Some of your stuff yeah yeah um all right what do you think the most what phase of a painting is the most fun to you i'd say three quarters of the way through is when it's really really going like the, the beginning is always the slowest like i could sit at i could ponder you know 
before I get moving, I could sit on it for quite a while. <laughs> um, and then the beginning can be a little bit slow and I'm trying to figure out where I'm going with it or just feel it, you know, sometimes I have to step away from it for a few days, whatever I'm doing. Um, and the middle is a good point. It's like, ah, oh, okay, it's coming together. You know, it's like finally it's flowing. And then three quarters of the way through, you know, you got this. It's like, okay, good. I, I totally know like this is turning out just the way I want it. And, you know, you know, and then the end's always a little bit sad. It's kind of like finishing a really good book. I know um, your other artists mentioned that and you're like, no, I love finishing a book. I get really sad about finishing my books because I a really good book. I'm like, don't end. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 And I know kind of, well, now what? <laughs> I mean, I've been doing this for weeks or months or working on this painting, you know, so I always love having another commission, you know, lined up on the horizon, you mm -hmm. know, another job. Yeah. And keeping things keeping the flow. Yeah, and, and speaking of that, how do you how do you market and advertise and and manage your business? How do you get business? Yeah, that's um I think, you know, um keep painting. You know, I think as long as I keep painting and that's what like the message is to me all the time, just keep painting, Heather. Just keep painting. Yeah. You know, if I keep painting it and I show the world what I'm doing and I share it on social media, like I mean, social media can be exhausting, I know, for us artists and for everyone. <laughs> and sometimes uh, I need a break from it, too. But I also have to look at it as a blessing, because back in the day, you know, if it were Van Gogh, he had, you know, his paintings stacked up everywhere, you know, and it's like we're, we're, no one's seen them and they're just hidden. Like, I guess it's I have to look at it as a positive and a blessing, too, that, you know, I can do a painting and put on social media and it can literally be seen all over the world within seconds. Mm -hmm. uh you know it could be shared you know on my site or you know so it's a blessing and i i do i try to share as often as possible what i'm doing on facebook i have a very a beautiful following on facebook that's um uh a loyal very encouraging and supportive following on facebook and i love my facebook followers instagram is a little more challenging for me um i have a good amount of followers on instagram but um I don't get the same responses. Like I'll post something on Facebook and, you know, like my heart art, you know, I, I post equally on both and I, all my sales, I just, you know, did tons of heart art sales. They're all from Facebook, you know, and people just message me. So I, I put it out there, even like with my shark's tooth jewelry, I, it was during COVID and I didn't know what to do. And I had all these shark's teeth and my dear friend, Becky said, well, what are you going to do with all those Heather? Can you make money with them? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just doing this because it's meditative and I can get outside. You know, I'm out of work. So I went home and I was like, he's right. And I made some earrings. I posted my earrings just like, oh, I made these with my shark's tooth because I'd been posting like, oh, I'm finding all these shark's teeth. Right. And I sold mm -hmm. like 20 pairs a day. Wow. Like, it's just, yeah, it's just things work. I, I If I just keep creating yeah. the universe, list, if I keep creating and sharing. And then things flow. It's when I stop creating or get down that then it's like, you know, why, how can I complain that I'm not getting work if I'm not creating and I'm not mm -hmm. sharing? Mm -hmm. You got to put yourself out there, you know, and you got to, I 100%, a thousand percent believe in self promotion. You have to self promote yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to share your message. You have to share your gifts. You have to share what you're doing. Yep. Yeah. If you don't promote yourself, nobody else will. Nobody, nobody's waiting in line to do it for you. Exactly, exactly. And it takes time. <laughs> I had to learn on YouTube, like I told you earlier, how to do reels, how to do stories. I've, I've gotten frustrated a lot. My reel took me half a day, you know, I don't know what I was doing. I hired friends to show me and, you know, just, you know, the learning curve, but you gotta, I guess, you know, you gotta keep up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. You, you mentioned, you mentioned George O'Keefe, you mentioned Van Gogh. If you could study under any artist, living or dead, who would it be and why? Oh, wow. That's a that's an interesting question. I mean, of course, I, I love Frida Kahlo because I love who she was and her. Uh, she's not my favorite artist because a lot of it's gory, weird stuff with her body and stuff. I usually, <laughs> Frida was very expressive. I, 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 it might be George O'Keefe, like, wow, she's amazing. Uh, Michelangelo, like, but he was a sculptor more than a painter. I mean, he was a painter, but his gift, he said he was a sculptor, right? Uh, and the fact what he could pull out of stone, I'm mean, just like the passion, you know, when I was young, I read The Agony and the Life of Michelangelo, 
and that was life changing for me. Um, uh, there's so many great artists that one caught me, but uh, I'd have to say Georgia O'Keeffe, like just the flow in her her flowers and and mm -hmm. the softness, the beauty, and and her and her story, and you know being in New Mexico, and it's just so cool. <laughs> All right. All right, here's another one to, to catch you off guard with. If you could if you could travel to anywhere in the world to paint a particular scene, where would it be? Oh. Somewhere very tropical and beautiful. A sunrise, somewhere amazing. Like, gosh. I've always wanted to go to the Maldives. Um that's tricky. Maybe Tahiti. You know, I've spent some time in Tahiti. That was amazing. I'd love Hawaii. Somewhere tropical and beautiful where I could get some photos and just some amazing water and sunrise. Mm -hmm. Lush. Yeah, I like all that too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yep. It's, yep. We're in the same boat. Yeah. Why? Uh... <laughs> Why well, go somewhere cold and miserable when you can be somewhere tropical and beautiful? Oh, yeah. These days, my trips, like, I don't even want to go to cities. Like, if I go to big cities, like, I've been to Europe and done that. I come back. I need a vacation for my vacation. I'm like, I want to go somewhere beautiful and nature and peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here's another one. If you could have, okay. if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Uh, superpower? There's two. I can, can I go with two? So, so uh, yeah, one yeah. Is, you can have two. I, I've always invisible i think sometimes and especially even living in a small town no per nothing personal <laughs> I, I i think like going places and being able to be invisible and just be would be um i've, I've yearned a lot to be visible sometimes invisible sometimes yeah. uh, but another one um we uh to transport myself not like fly somewhere but like beam me up scotty type of like transport like just mm -hmm. be able to mind travel, you know, transport. Like I, I, I want to be in, you know, Bali today, swimming with the, you know, manta rays. I'm there. That'd be my superpower. Mm. <laughs> nice. Tele teleportation. Yes. Yes. I think that's what that Tele is. Yeah. Teleportation, transportation, you know. And then, and then you're invisible when you get there. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you got to combine them. <laughs> Oh, that's invisible. good. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I I never thought about being invisible, but um, I can see I can see that I can see that because I I often I'm I'm often alone walking around and and uh, just sort of blending in and eavesdropping and looking you know people watching be easier be easier to eavesdrop and people watch if you were invisible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right. I totally can go to the <laughs> yep. All right, one more. If you could change the world in one way, what would it be? Um, you know, it's so hard for me to see animal abuse and um, you know, needless needless animal abuse and see animals suffering. Um, you know, dogs, starving dogs and you know, just, you know, pointless killing of sharks and torturing animals like i see that stuff and i can't sleep like it bothers me for days you know i have to like i, I don't want to avoid the reality of it but it's so hard for me i feel it like so deeply it hurts me so badly that i i can't you know I, I just wish i just wish i understand you know if you're eating it and stuff but just the, the senseless acts of of you know torture on, on creatures really really mm. breaks my heart i would i would end Where that where do you where do you see such horrible things? Oh, that stuff pops up on Instagram. Crazy stuff pops up. If I open, you know, and I have to like, then I have to block it. Like, see less of this or block it, you know. Oh, all right. But it is awareness. It's awareness too of of stuff that's happening that does need to, you know, that people do need to be aware to help stop these acts, you know. Yeah, I don't have that on my my Instagram feed, thankfully. Well, so, yeah, that's. I'd good. rather I'd rather be bliss, bliss blissfully unaware. Of all the horrible things exactly. in, the, in the world. <laughs> I don't even want to read the news anymore. It's exactly. I mean, maybe because I follow a lot of dogs and I follow a lot of, you know, dog rescuers and I follow a lot of shark things and shark rescuers and, you know, whales. And, you know, it might be because of that. Like all yep. the animal act, you know. Yeah, yeah. Why. It fits into the same general category. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, where can people find you online? 
Okay, well, I, I have my uh, on Facebook, um, Heather Aguilera is just my personal page um, where I post a lot of stuff and my life. And then on Instagram, I'm Heather Aguilera Art. Uh, and then I have a website that is, I love my website too. It's heather.art. So it's just www.heather.art. And on my website, you can uh, order uh, prints of any kind. I have merchandise. Um, the G clay prints are really beautiful. The fine art paper prints that you can frame are actually like amazing quality. They almost look like velvet. Like they're such great quality. I'm really impressed with the quality. But then mm -hmm. you can get little things, like bugs and tote bags and cute stuff too on my website. I'm about to launch um, a new painting on there, New Light, that um, was my last commission piece. Um, I was going to launch it January, but I didn't get it photographed in time. But so now February, um, that it's a sunrise. Uh, so I'm excited to get that up on my website. Cool. Yeah, I just I just looked at your website before the show. It's very very good, very professional. It's got some nice oh, art nice. on it. It's such a, a great you. thing to be able to do to be able to put your art uh, on on a website like that and and sell it. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Van Gogh would have loved that. He would have been a rich man. <laughs> Poor Van Gogh. <laughs> so many right would have been rich. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was the next step that that was I was really happy to make that step, you know, and and the fact that, you know, because I would sell, you know, if you sell an original painting, then it's like, well, it's gone and that money, you know, but but the fact that you can still sell prints and it's still out there and people can, you know, get mm -hmm. a G-clay print looks so close to an original painting. And and one thing I do on the G-clay is like, actually, these are G-clays because the originals sold. Most all my originals sell, which I'm pretty happy about, you know, I can't complain. <laughs> but yeah. so then I paint over them so like there's actually texture on here so this is an embellished clay which so it's actually the original brush strokes on it which i think is pretty cool yeah that is nice you get to get to yeah. sell your originals and keep something that's pretty close yes awesome great well it's been great having you on heather it's been so much fun talking to you and uh enlightening art discussion too i'm sure it will yeah. inspire lots of people to keep painting Thanks for having me. And I love sharing. I like seeing. So is that your boat? You're on your boat. Yeah, this is my boat. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> my bookshelf. And then behind me is the the galley and then the outside. A whole bunch uh, of stuff. Bookshelf important. What yeah. do they say? Let me see your bookshelf. <laughs> yeah. You know, my, uh, my, my, real, my real bookshelf is my Kindle, though. Right. That's right. where that's what I actually read. These are these are just books that I that I couldn't throw away, you know, <laughs> that I couldn't uh, leave leave home or reference. Some of them and are I reference just, books uh, and some of them I are my books. Say, you know, yeah, some of your books. Right. You have your own books. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to say. Like, thank you so much. Like you're an inspiration, uh, you know, and a dream seeker yourself. And uh, uh, yeah, super Super proud, super excited to see all the things you're doing and manifesting in your life and living your dreams. Thanks. Yeah, I mean the 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 name of the podcast, Dream Chasers and Eccentrics. I th you know, most people get it. Some people it, it turns off. They're like, I'm not a dream chaser and except like I am. Like I'm I'm totally well, like I'm I'm, well, I'm both of those 100. percent You know, and I think most interesting people it. are. When you sent me the name, I said I was like, well, Paul, this is exactly Paul. I know how he came up with this. <laughs> 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 yeah, it took I me forever you, it took right me forever to come up with a name to come up with a name for the for this show um you know i wanted a second podcast where i could interview anybody i wanted but i'm like God, what do i call i'm not going to call it the paul trammell show that's just that's kind of boring um so yeah it took me a while and then i finally latched onto that I, one and said what the heck i'll go with it it's perfect and it's self-explanatory. And I think it's an interesting, I mean, it's definitely for me being an artist, if you're an artist or an eccentric, I don't know if I'm an eccentric and I've thought about it. I know I'm an artist. You know, I never made that decision. Artists chose me, I feel like. So, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I will totally listen because I'm always, you know, wanting to learn about people with the interesting lives and people pursuing their dreams and passions and, you know, different, yeah. different type of lifestyle. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Chasing our dreams, living them, not just chasing living. them, but, but catching them and living them out. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. Heather, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been great having you. Awesome. Paul. All right. Bye now. Bye-bye.